how do I build my credit? So the, the next step into understanding, now you understand what credit is. Now you understand who the credit bureaus are. You need to understand uh, what type of credits are there, what type of credits are, uh, are out there. Um, the number one, the two things, the two most uh, common forms of credit, all installment credit. Installment credit um, is a mortgage, an auto loan, a student loan. An installment is basically you have a set payment. So your, your car loan, your car loan is going to be $300 a month for six months. And that price is never going to change as long as you make your payments on time. You may have a late fee here or there. Um, you may uh, try to pay more of it at one time, but your monthly payment is going to be the same throughout that life, that, that life of the loan. The same with your mortgage. Um, your mortgage is going to be the same. Your insurance could change. That's where a lot of people get confused. They'll say, well, my insurance went up or down. No, your, I mean, your, uh, your mortgage went up and down. No, your insurance that is also a part of your mortgage may have went up and down, but your mortgage payment for that 30 years is going to be the same payment. Um, and so that's an installment, the same payment each time. So that's one thing to know about installment. Revolving is a credit card. Revolving is simply what it says is you may have a thousand dollar limit. Well, we'll use it simple. You may have a hundred dollar limit on that card and month to month, you determine how much of that $100 you use. So one month you may only use $10. Another month you may use 50. Another month you may use the entire hundred dollars. And depending on how you use that, that dictates your credit score. With installment, as long as you pay your payment on time, you won't be dinged, you, it won't change anything. Like you can make all the payments you want in a row with an installment and it should stay the same as long as you don't miss a payment. But revolving on the month to month basis, if you're using 90 of that $100 you have on that revolving uh, credit line, your credit score is gonna drop. If you're using, if you go from 90 to only using 10%, your credit score is gonna improve. So that's what a revolving, a revolving uh, is. Um, as it says, oftentimes revolving is a, a more dangerous way to borrow than installment. The reason why the revolving is more dangerous is because you have the ability to use whatever you want to. So, in fact, if you have a $10,000 credit card, you can use $10,000 in one month. If you fall into hard times or whatever, you can use up to $10,000. So that's way dangerous than your $300 car payment. That $300 car payment can be missed um, and it's scary. But the fact of you can use ten thousand dollars in one month when you use zero the last month um, is, is is tricky, and carrying high balances can drag your score down. And with the revolving, a lot of times there is an interest rate that is tacked on to what you already owe, um, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit later, also. Um, and a good point that we try to make out to those of those of us who are maybe just getting started or do, who have kids, um, you, a great way to build a credit before turning 18 is being an authorized user on an account. And we will get into, so what an authorized user is essentially is you would have your, you have your card or a parent would have their card or a brother or a sister, older brother or sister, and they would add their child or that other person that's attempting to build their credit onto their credit profile. With that, that person that's being added will receive the benefits, that same benefits as the person who's making the bill pay. Um, and, and that person could have access to the card or the person who ordered it could simply get the card, activate it and cut it up to where that card is not just out and about, but they would receive the benefits of being an authorized user on that card. And the good thing about being an authorized user is you also can be removed. So if that card is about to be in bad standing or payments are gonna be missed, you can simply take that person off at any time with no penalty um, to your credit profile. Um, any questions so far, anything that we kind of went through? I don't want to speed through it and get to the next part. I don't have a question, but I do want to make a quick comment about this last one um, with being an authorized user. And I think that's so important that we keep that in mind. Um, and I'm happy that you said like older sister, older brother, because even me, like I don't have children right now, but I'm thinking about when Ziri turns 16, how I can start helping her build credit. And Ziri is my little sister, for those who don't know. Um, these conversations that we are having is so, so, so important because I can remember being in college and struggling to get my first car because I had no credit established and my mom couldn't help me by co-signing. So my older sister had to help me by co-signing, but I still had no credit established. But then I had my white homeboy, his name was Mason, 
he was in college with like a 750 credit score because his dad had him as an authorized user in high school. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is the game that we kind of have to play catch up on. So I don't want this to just kind of go in one ear and out the other, but no, like us getting our credit to a great place is deeper than just us because we yes. can help family members, we can help children, our, you know, siblings, whoever it is, just help them skip some of the steps that we had to take out of like, just not knowing any better. Yes, yes. Um, and that kind of to that next point of what Key is saying, that like, brings me to my 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 first introduction to credit is um I was in college and I went I was in college three hours away from home. I went home on a Thanksgiving day trip on a break really quick. And I went to uh Old Navy with some friends of mine, purchased two items for uh thirty five dollars, went to the cash register, um, had the cash in hand and she was like, Hey, do you want to save money by signing up for our, um, our program? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Um, she was like, you'll save 10%. So, you know, knowing what I know now, 10% of $35 was $3 and 50 cents. So I signed up for their program, but what she asked me for was she asked me for my social and I didn't ring a bell or anything. She just, Hey, say, can you give me my social? I said, yeah, of course. So, um, I walked out of there, did not give them $35 because I thought she forgot to take the money from me or whatever. Um, I go back to college, you know, my mother's address at the time is, where my mail is going to. Um, and probably like three or four years later, my mother calls me and says, Hey, you got this, you know, bill from some kind of collector. I'm like, okay. Um, and I look into the thing. I'm like, what, what does it say? She's like, well, it's saying that you owe uh, $500. And I was like, based on what she's like from old Navy. And I'm like, what? So I end up calling the number and this $35, I signed up for a credit card. I did not know. And that $35 with interest turned into $500 when I didn't make the payments, you know, three after three or four years, you know? So that was my very first introduction into that. So um, always know when someone asks you for your credit card and your credit, your, your social security number, for whatever reason in the store, uh, mortgage, auto, whatever, you're most likely looking into, you know, some sort of credit um, at that point. They're, they're pulling your credit history. So that goes into where, what, I, what we were just speaking on on this last slide, when they're, when they're pulling your credit, when they ask you for your social, they're sending your information to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion with your credit. They can't, they can't get your information without having your social number. So they're sending that information to those three and saying, hey, what is Kiani's credit score? Like, does she have anything in her name? Is she taking care of it? Like, that is that your social is tying you back to most of your outstanding bills um, or any of your bills for, for that matter. Um, and so that, that, that's a brief story of kind of not knowing, not knowing this information. So now when I tell my, talk to my nephew and niece, I'm like, hey, when you go to college or whatever, anytime you're anywhere, like don't give anyone your social. If you hear social, they ask you for your social security number, they're running your credit. Um, so just always be mindful of that. Um, the next part of it is kind of- Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Sherelle had a question in the chat. She said, are there any particular credit cards or methods you, you, you recommend as an authorized user? My little sister just started college and I'm trying to help her out as much as possible. So I I would never encourage someone to open a credit card in their name to start helping someone else build credit. It's kind of more of a thing of if you see that you want to start building your credit and or you already have a credit card that has good credit history, I would add your sister on there. Like I would one understand it for myself. And then as you kind of get the information, now you can say, okay, I'm comfortable enough to where I can make these payments on time. And then have my sister add it because what we don't want is you open a credit card for yourself, you're not financially or mentally ready for that, and you add your sister on there, and now you're getting a bad credit rap and she's getting one. So if you already have a credit card, I would say go for it. If not, I would say wait. Um, we'll get into it later to where I kind of explain the difference between um, a secure and unsecure credit card, and then I'll kind of give you all some examples of both, and then you may can look into it. And as key, you know, like any kind of follow-up questions you all have on anything, as you go through anything, like don't ever feel afraid. Like just send key a, a, a message. And I, I'm always happy to kind of get on the phone with people or text people or, you know, um, on social media just to make sure. It, it's, it seems scary, but what we find is like the more people get this information, like the, the easier it is for us to make these sort of decisions. So, but that's a great question. Um, so we talked about what a credit score is. We talked about, who the credit bureaus, who's getting this information, who's giving you this information. We also talked about the types of loans. 
So now we want to talk about with this information, how is your credit score kind of figured out? So this is all they give us to tell us how they're looking at this. Um, and this is the credit bureau. So Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion all, all say this, these are the five things that they look at when they're determining your credit score. Um, and it's the weirdest thing because me and Keanu could have the exact identical things on our credit score on all three of them. And I promise y'all, our credit scores will be different. Like, but they tell us this is what they're looking at. I promise y'all. Like, we could have the same amount of years, same car, same payments, make everything on time. And they're going to say, well, Keone has a 750 and Desmond has a 720. Like, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Um, but the number one thing always is payment history. Um, I know Key has talked in her budgeting classes. I've, I've been in a few of Key's budgeting classes. So I've picked up on a couple of things. But she always, she always talks about paying yourself first and then you kind of take care of your bills. So essentially credit is the same way to the where they're looking at, do you pay your bills on time? So your payment history is 35% of your score. That's why you will see if you ever miss a credit, a payment on a, on a car, a credit card, like your score is going to take a tremendous hit. Um, and it's going to take a hit for 12 to 24 months with the missed payment on there. So uh, payment history is the number one thing they're looking at. So always pay your bills on time. I'm a big advocate for auto pay. Um, like, much how key talks about budgeting like with my with my budget i have i have my auto pay already figured out and then i have my, hey this money is like I, I basically auto pay another like my savings account so like i have my this is my bill money on auto pay and then automatically my savings is going to another account and that's where i kind of keep my savings so um payment history is big so whatever you can do never miss a payment history i know some people don't i'm never miss a payment i know some people don't like auto pay they kind of like to know um what's coming in and out of their accounts perfectly fine if that's the type of person you are but just make sure you don't miss a payment if you ever do miss a payment and it's by accident please do not hesitate to call your lender or whoever that is and say hey i did not miss that like a lot of times you'll see they'll forgive you for having a missed payment the first time sometimes the second time they'll forgive you for a missed payment the first or second time as long as you kind of are on top of it within seven to ten business days if you let it linger into that two-week period uh i'm not sure but if you kind of jump on it right away like hey like this was supposed to come out of my account. Not sure why I missed. Now what happens is some of them will be like, hey, we can forgive this payment, but we need to have you on auto pay going forward because we're not going to be like doing this again or forgiving you again. So always do that. What you owe, what you owe is basically your debt. So your debt to income ratio, just as far as how much do you owe? Like, do you have $100,000 that you owe? Do you have no, like no money? And then the what you owe kind of flows under that credit utilization piece that we'll get into later when we talked about the revolving uh, loan, but like what you, what you owe, like all of your, your car loan, your mortgage loan, it all goes into one bubble and they kind of give you the, a number based off of that. Your credit history length. A lot of people, they'll say, Hey, Desmond, like, I've, you know, I just opened my car. I had credit for a year. Like I haven't never missed a payment. Like, why don't I have a 800 credit score? Like, no, like nine times out of 10, you won't see a hundred, 800 credit score until a, a person has somewhere between seven to 10 years worth of credit history. Like the older you get, the more you age, the higher your score can get. Sometimes you'll get credit just because you, you know saying you age another year. You'll see that a lot. It's kind of like, I know how like with car insurance, the younger you are, the more you pay. Like it's sort of like that in the credit, the credit world also. So your credit history um, length pays a, a, a role in that also. Um, 10% is the types of credits you have. So do you have a good mixture of credit? Um, as I kind of already told y'all, like installment is good credit, but the credit bureaus look at revolving in a lot, in a different light because revolving really shows like how responsible you are with it. Yeah, you have a $20,000 credit card, but you're only using $2,000 of that a month. Like you're doing pretty well with your credit. Like, but if you're, if you have a $20,000 credit card and using $18,000 of it a month, like they deem you a little bit more for that. Um, new credit inquiries. That's, hey, I'm, I'm car shopping. I'm going to the car dealership. Um, they're running your credit. They're sending your credit to Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. And how many of those do you have in a certain period of time? That's why we always encourage people to where you want to kind of space things out. If you're looking for a house, like you want to do all of your loans in that same time period. You, know, you don't want to do a loan in January and then do another one eight months later in August, like you're gonna get deemed for both of those. Um, if you do all of it in January, like the credit bureaus will look at it and say, oh, okay, Keanu's looking for a house. Like 
we know that she's looking for a house, like we're only gonna um like ding her one time. But if Keani is going out every month and applying for credit, the credit bureaus look at that as like, hey, what is she doing? Like, is she look she's trying to add is she trying to add more debt? Like what like what exactly is going on? So you will see dings in there. That's why when you go to the car dealership, do not give them your social before you know you want that car. Because what they're gonna say is, hey, let's see what you can qualify for. You can go and say, oh, like, hey, I want this accord. Like, what does it cost? Let me test drive it. Okay, I want to go forward with the accord. Here's my social. We can see it. Like, don't go in there until you know their price and what they what they're doing. Um, don't just let them just go in there and tell you, hey, like, let's see what you can qualify for before we can get you in a car. Like, no, because um, they're gonna send your they're gonna send your uh, your social to every bank that will accept accept your social, and you're gonna get a bunch of dings at one time. Now, if you don't get a car from there, you gotta go to another car dealership, and they're gonna ding you also. So. Be very careful when going into uh, dealerships. Um, all right, cool. I'm um, sorry, an inquiry, I... an inquiry I... stay on your report for two years. Um, like when you go do an inquiry, it's going to stay on your report for two years. So it'll disappear after two years. I got a question, Des. Yep. So um, one thing that you brought up, you, uh, you said something about uh, like when you're buying a house and like, you know, basically the credit bureaus can can see that now i know that you've had a lot of ex a lot of experience working with folks who are you know going down that journey of home ownership when it comes to like these five parts of your credit score what is the number one thing that typically like trips people up and kind of like prolongs their process and so and we're getting the house or getting any sort of loan like getting a house because i think that's that's so important especially for our generation we're paying so much money in rent and not thinking like about home ownership and what it will take to like go through that process smooth sailing. So I, I'll be honest with you, Key, like what I run into a lot of times is you have a lot of first time home buyers who never trusted credit. So they don't have anything in their name and they will try to go get a house. And that's going to prolong your period time period because the credit bureaus are going to be like, okay, what, who am I loaning to? And then the second part of that is you will have the money and everything, but, because you have no credit history, you're not getting qualified for the, 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 the cost of the house that you are expecting. So because you're, you never built anything, so you may want a $300,000 house, but we don't, we don't trust you. We don't know if you can do it. So what we will approve you for is this $150,000 house. Like, that's what I see a lot of times with a lot of different things. And, and then you will see some cases to where people haven't checked their credit in years, and we'll get into that later. And when they finally start the house process, it's like, oh, I didn't know I had this in my name or I didn't even know I owed these people, you know, this money. I can take care of it right now. I just never knew of it. Like, that's a part of kind of checking your credit. And, you know, that but that, that was a great question. But the number one thing is kind of go ahead and get comfortable. Even, even if you put something small in your name and I'll give you all something small later to where you can kind of um, look into like early credit building. But. I, I advise everybody over 25 years old, like once you're in your profession, like get a small credit card, like just start a building on it and start using it. Just use it for gas one time a month, pay the bill in total. And I promise you, you will see the benefits of that when you're ready to get your house, because now you have something in your, in your name. Um, a car is okay, but cars don't benefit our credit as much as a credit card would be honest with you. Um, it's not looked at in the same, in the same light. Like I've seen people who've had, multiple cars, never missed a car payment, 10 years of credit, and they'll have a 680 credit score, 660 credit score, because they just made their car payments on time. It, you know, it, it wasn't any stress, but you have somebody that has a $500 credit card and has taken care of it for three or four years, they'll have easily a 700 just because of the type of credit. Um, so that's a that's a good question. Key. So it's important to have like a good mix of both. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank I you. have a question. question. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so say someone has about 80,000 in student loans, but they're looking to um, start the home ownership process like two years from then. Like, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Because I guess my concern is I want to get into home ownership, but mm -hmm. I also want to pay off some of my student loans. So what does that look like? So that's another good one. So with student loans, the, you one, one I always, I always um, as Key said, like I'm a subject matter expert on credit. A lot of with a first time home buyer, a lot of student loans, your student loans would not equate into your debt to income ratio. So it should not hurt you 
from owning a home, especially if you're making your payments and things like that on time. But you would want to talk to a lender because what a lender would do. So the first how I advise all my clients to do credit, I always tell you to find you a realtor first, like find you a realtor that you trust. Like when I bought my first home, we called four different realtors and we interviewed all four. Like we we interviewed them like, hey, what's your process? Like, how do you go about this? And we, then we found the one that we was most comfortable with. And then from that point, that lender, I mean, that realtor will tell you they're trusted lenders. So you don't want to go to the lenders first because the lenders is going to throw you in your, their own programs. A lot of real estate agents have relationships with lenders and they'll say, hey, Keani, like I just did a loan for Desmond. He was the first time home buyer. You guys, demographics fit similar. Go to this lender. This lender knows this program. And then he's going to say, hey, I'm connecting you with Keani. They're going to get you straight. So, um, but long story short, I just kind of gave you a bit of runaround answer, but your student loan should not affect your debt to come in income ratio. And as long as you're making your student loan payments on time, it should not interfere with you um, owning a home. So you shouldn't have to pay down your student loans before you go get home. Because if that was the case, nobody out here would be owning homes because <laughs> we all have student loans. It's crazy. You know that. Um, but that's a great question. Uh, anybody else got anything before we uh, go to the next one? And I'm Did very I answer your question, though? Yes, you did. Thank you. No problem. And I'm happy you asked that too, because sometimes we kind of like make up these stories in our head that we think will like deter us or like prolong the process a little bit. And it's like, no. So like, and I want anybody else, if you have like a unique situation that you think, you know, might stop you from owning that house or doing whatever you want to do, as far as your credit, do not be afraid to come off mute and ask that question because I'm pretty sure like it can help more than just you out. Oh, yeah. Sure. And I have a question. Um, it's kind of piggybacking off what the last person said, but instead of student loans, my main thing is like medical bills. Medical bills. Okay. So one with medical bills, I would tell you to contact a um someone that specializes in, in, in credit. So is the credit? Uh, uh, I'm I'm not gonna ask you that question. So I would assume that they're affecting you in a negative way. So I would say contact someone that specializes in, in credit repair. Um, if you wanted to, I could take a free look at it for you um, offline. Um, I'll give you my information at the end of this. It should be on one of the slides. And I can just look at your credit report for free and kind of tell you what I would advise. Um, the, good, the good and bad thing with medical bills are, I've seen a lot of times where they are... Uh, they're not the worst to get removed or work out a deal. Um, now they will be looked at bad on a credit report because they can drop your score. Um, but a lot of these medical collections place, and I'll explain to you all what a collection is. Um, just so I don't think I have that on a slide. Let me check. Um, what you will see sometimes is on your credit report, you will have a collection. What a collection is, is um, Kiani owns a hospital. You went to Kiani for medical treatments. You did not pay Kiani. I, Desmond, step in and I say, hey, Keani, you couldn't get that money from, you couldn't get that $1,000 from them. Sell me that medical record. I'll give you $500. Now, what happens is I now contact you. As I'm working with Keani, I'll say it like I'm on behalf of Keani. I'll say, hey, you owe Keani $1,000. I'm here to collect it. And so what you will find a lot of times is if you tell them, hey, I don't have $1,000. I do have $500, though they'll take it because they broke even. Now, if you say, okay, I got 700, they're going to take it because they made a profit off of it. And with collections, it's a seven year period on your, it's a seven year period on your credit report. So they're working against the clock too. So say, say you went to Keani in 2022, Keani done figure out, I, I don't got time to chase Desmond down. Like I, I just don't have time. Like I'm gonna write it off. So I'm gonna get the thousand dollars on the write off to the government or whatever. Now I do, I did on top of that, sell that $500 to Desmond, the collection agency. Now let Desmond worry about that because now Keani had that two years ago. So now this collection company only has five years to catch up with you before it's completely off of your credit report. And I'm not gonna say you don't have to pay it, but it's not gonna be on your credit report and, and hurting you credit wise. So they know that because you're gonna get the ding everyone. Oh, your score just dropped again. So they, 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 they prey on that, they prey on that fear. So what I always tell my clients is when you get a call from a collection or an email from a collection company, Pick up the phone and say, hey, thank you for letting me know. This is my correct address. Give them your address. Um, can you mail me an itemized statement of what I owe you? And also, can you also uh, mail me the agreement that gives you the right to collect this debt? 
They send it to you and say, hey, please do not call me. I'll call you all. Like they cannot harass you. So you just, you stop the calls and you can say, hey, don't email me or call me. Like I will reach out to you all once I get the mail in the, in the thing. And then now from that point, you put it on yourself to kind of take a deep breath and look at it because they're going to call you nonstop, nonstop and make you feel that pressure of, oh, I got to pay them. Instead of you just take a deep breath back. Okay. Then you, when you call them back, you, okay, you guys are saying I owe you a thousand. I checked it out. I did go to Keone's hospital in 2022. Um, I don't have a thousand dollars right now. I got two hundred dollars. Y'all want it or y'all don't? They may say no. Uh, trust me. When they get to year six, they're gonna call back like, "Hey, you doing that two hundred dollars?" Yeah, yeah. Because what you see a lot of times is your credit is impacted the most, as I told y'all earlier, by late payments in that first twenty-four to thirty-six months. So essentially, after three years, it shouldn't be dinging your credit that bad. Um, so you probably can withheld, but. I always tell people, like, if you can pay it and get it off of there, like, if you can get $1,000 down of debt to $200, because we all go through things. Sometimes you just don't have it at that moment. But when you get back on your feet and it's like, okay, I can make this $1,000 debt. As I told y'all with the, the, uh, the, the Old Navy thing, I owed them $500. But when I called them, I was like, hey, man, I got $200. And they were like, okay, we can do 286 Can you make one payment? Yep, I can make it. And sometimes some people that set up a payment plan with you. I'm not a big fan of payment plans, but if it's a sizable amount, I say get it off. I'm not a fan of payment plans because what happens is as you're making these payment plans, they're still going to ding you monthly until it's paid in full. And then if you miss a payment, it kind of restarts your whole cycle. So I'm more of the mindset of, I want to make one payment to you. You send me my paperwork, we shake hands, we're good, you know? Um, but everybody's on their own basis. So um, yeah, somebody said, I don't know, so many people scare me about home. Oh, I'm so tired of paying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a homeowner. Um, so, so somebody in the chat said, I'm not going to lie. So many people scare, uh, scare me out of buying a home. I'm so tired of paying $1,800 more per, per rent. Um, I see both sides of it because a lot comes with home ownership that people do not tell you in times as far as um, a lot of hitting, not a lot, I'm not going to say a lot of hidden costs, but there are costs that are associated with um, home ownership that a lot of real estate agents and people who pump us into home ownership do not tell us about. And then the other part of that is um, like your servicing, all the, all the repairs, all of that are, are on you. So one thing is always to do good research on before you go into the home buying process, like make sure some things are under warranty. What I found out recently is when you buy a home, you can ask that the seller of the home buys you an insurance policy on items in the house and things around the house for an extended period of time. It can be baked into your contract of, hey, you're selling me this house, this house is old, but I wanna, I wanna make sure this HVAC is okay. So I want you to pay for the service. For me to buy, to close on this loan, pay two years of warranty on the HVAC. Like you can bake that into your contract. That's a part of having a good realtor. So things like that can happen. Um, you could, they could, they could uh, guarantee appliances like, hey, I'm buying a house, but I want to make sure you you put a year worth of whatever on a refrigerator and also on a microwave. So don't be fearful about it. Like I said, um, I got some great realtor friends, depending on your area. Um, I got some realtor friends. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what area you're in, but I got some great realtor friends that I talk to you. Like And like I told you, like I interview realtors and I, I, I never tell somebody that, hey, this person is coming with you. Like you got to interview them and talk to them. And then when you talk to them, like go with who is you're most comfortable with. Like don't just take the first word of it, you know? So, um, and you learn things as you know, like I, I, I think we purchase, we're in the process of purchasing our third home and I've learned something which, with each of them, like that I didn't know with the previous one, you know? So all of that goes into it. I got one more question, Dave, before you keep yeah. going. So when you were talking to um, Daisha about uh, the whole like collection process, da, 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 like say for instance, the seven years comes around and these things drop off of my credit report, will I see an increase in my score or does that not like go hand in hand with each other? It depends, um, depending on what it is. Uh, Cause I, as I told you, the most, the, the biggest hit you're gonna take is in that 24 to 36 month period. Like I'll, I'll be honest with you right now. If you go purchase a house after a debt's been on your, if, if you make all your on-time payments for five straight years, but you have a debt from five years ago, like that's not going to affect your loan. Like they're, they're, they're going to say, hey, he only went through this time period. But we see like the last five years, she's been killing it. She's been knocking it out. Like they're not going to say, oh, we're not giving you that loan because of that five years ago. Now, 
if it's a house payment from five years ago, they may look into that. But if it's a car or something like that, like that, that's not going to affect you. Um, and then when things drop off your credit score, essentially you should see your score grow up. But it's not, I'm not going to say that's always going to be the case based on me telling you they don't necessarily tell us what they're looking at when they're creating these scores. Like I've seen people, things drop off and they see an increase in their score. And then I've seen some other people say, oh, my score didn't increase. I've also seen people pay their car loan early and their credit score decreases. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like they pay their credit card, their, their car loan in full early, a year early, and their car loan increases. And they'll be like, hey, why did my car, my, my score increase? I mean, decrease. It decreased because you had an installment loan, which is what a car is. And for five years, they were expecting payments from you for five years. You paid it early. You maybe paid it in the four years. That shows that you, you know, you, you took care of it, but you technically didn't uphold your end of the bargain of it being a five-year loan. So they ding you. But nine times out of 10, a lot of people always bounce back from that within a few months um, on that. But don't ever be shocked when you pay your credit, your car loan off early um, and they ding your, uh, they ding your, your, uh, your credit score. Good question. Thank you. Uh, anybody else got anything before we move on? Okay, cool. Um, how to get a credit card. So as I told you all, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of owning a credit card. I feel like, I feel like most people should have it if you're responsible. So the, what Key is talking to you all about with budgeting goes hand in hand with like actually taking that next step financially into that because they will punish us for not playing a game, like essentially, you know, like, so not having a credit card, like, yeah, you can take care of everything with cash and all of that, but you're going to be punished on the back end with what rates you're getting um, with the car. What rates are you getting with the mortgage? Um, I shared this example that, uh, on a, a previous thing me and Key had, um just off credit score alone that determines um let me get let me get some math going for you so let's say you got let's say you have the bare minimum credit score you need to i think the bare minimum credit score you need to have unless you're military is a 640 what a 640 would do is some people will approve you some people will deny you but you will have some approvals but you'll be at a higher rate um a more preferable limit for me is say a 720 that gives you you know you're going to get approved from everybody. And now we're talking about rates. So let's say you have a 640. And let's say you go do your mortgage loan, right? Um, if y'all want to pull out your calculator, let's say they tell you, hey, you have a 640 credit score. Um, we're going to do right by you. Um, each month, your payments are going to be $2,000 a month for your house, right? So most mortgage loans, they are 30 years. So if you do 2000, that's your payment times 12. So do 2,000 times 12, that's a year. That's $24,000. And now do that 24,000 times 30. For anybody that didn't do it, that's $720,000, right? That's what you have in a 640 bare minimum credit score. Like this is how the, this is how the game works. So over 30 years, you'll pay $720,000, right? Let's say you have that 720 and they're able to give you a better interest rate. We're gonna just do an easy number. Let's say they say, hey, instead of the 2,000 a month, we're going to do you at, we're going to do something simple. We're just going to take it down $250 a month. We're going to say, we're going to do you at uh, $1,750. So they'll say, hey, your payments per month are just $1,750 because you have a good credit score, right? So do the $1,750 times 12. Um, so that's $21,000 a month. Now do that times 30. So just off of that, you save by having a decent credit score, you save ninety thousand dollars in thirty years, and where could that ninety thousand dollars be going? That's your that's your kids' tuition. That's a better car. That's a bunch of different things. Now, when me and Key talked about was, let's say you're trying to flip real estate. Let's say you're trying to put renters in this, right? If you got a two thousand dollar a month payment, you got to put your house on the market for a renter at twenty five hundred, right? That's harder for somebody to kind of get into. But if you got the 1750, you might can just do uh 2000 or 225 and it, it's a lot easier for somebody to get into. So the interest rate matters a lot. And you will see it all the time to where the interest rate is the difference between I want this four hundred thousand dollar house or I need to get this two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, like just based on taking care of your credit. Um, so how do you so a credit card is an extension of getting you from that 660, 680, which are good credit scores 
to now I'm at a 720 to where now your interest rates are a lot better. And that's what we kind of get into. So to get a credit card in most states, in most cases, you need to be 18 years old. Um, to be added as an authorized user, you can be under 18 years old. But to actually have the credit card in your name and you be the only sole person, you're going to need to be 18 years of 18 years old. If you're only 18 years old and let's say you don't have a, a necessarily a job, they have student preferred cards. Um, student preferred cards are, are typically lower, um, lower uh, interest rates, but they also don't give you that much of a cushion or balloon on what they are lending to you. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm not going to over talk my next, uh, I'm talking about next slide. Um, and then you need to understand how to use a credit card. So your interest rates, so your interest rates are going to determine what you're paying on it. So a simple example I like to use is let's say you have a 20% interest rate on a, on a hundred dollar card, right? So for every dollar you use, they're going to charge you 20 cents on it. So if you go to the store and you spend $10 on that, if you do not pay that $10 back in full before your next statement date, they're going to ding you. They're going to add an additional, um, you spent $10, they're going to add $2 um, on top of that. So just always keep that in mind. That's what your interest rate is. Utilization. Your utilization is how much of your credit are you using? If you have $100 to your disposal on your credit card monthly um, and you're using $20, that's 20% utilization rate. So your utilization is always going to be um, what your limit is, so $100, um, divided into what you use. So that's, if you use $80, that's 80 divided by 100, that's 80%. That's your utilization. If you use $20 of it, it's 20 divided by 100. That's 20% utilization. You always want to be sure that you're staying under um, 30% on your utilization. You get dinged the closer you are to 30% and when you go over 30% on your utilization. I tell my clients personally, you want to stay at around 20%. So if you have a $1,000 credit card, you want to make sure on your statement, it's only reporting $200. That's not saying you can't use the $1,000, but when you, before your statement arrives, your statement should be the same period every year. You want to make sure your balance is cut down to where this is all that's reporting to the credit bureaus. As I said, if you're, if you're uncomfortable with a credit card, I would recommend getting a small secure credit card. Secure it means you back it with your funds. And just use it for gas once a month. Just go gas, put $50 in one time a month, or $30 or $40. Put the card up the rest of the month. Don't use it. Don't go out to eat with it. When you get your bill, pay whatever they say they owe, and you will start to see the benefits of you taking care of your credit card. I, I guarantee you. Um, and I just want to hop in really quick, quick, quick and say this, um, because it takes a whole lot of discipline, y'all, to not yeah. rack up credit card debt. And I'm speaking from experience. One of the good things that I feel like you have to kind of transform your mindset around is like this credit card is not my money. And yeah. anything that I spend on this credit card, I have to pay it back. And if I'm not paying the full balance back, I have to pay what I borrow plus interest. Interest is the price that you pay for borrowing money. So it's no different if we go in the store and we pick up a bag of gummy worms. We see a price tag underneath that. Your interest rate, that's the price tag that you are paying to have access to this money. So do not swipe your credit card for cash that you don't have. And another thing that me and Des, we were talking to like different students this summer, we used to always, always, always tell them that your credit card is not your emergency fund. I'm telling you, no. that is the quickest way for you to fall into credit card debt. And now you ha are having to pay off thousands mm -hmm thousands of dollars a day now i get it things happen stuff come up and if we're not financially prepared then of course do what you got to do but keep that as the back burner like that's your last option when it comes mm -hmm. to credit cards like the average interest rate on a credit card is between 20 and 30 percent mm -hmm. yep but i tell I mean, you, them numbers add up fast yeah I, I i like to generally i like to especially when you're first starting out i like to say if i cannot pay this money back today I don't need to put it on the credit card. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I if I can't pay the hundred dollars back, don't put it on the credit card. That's why I told y'all, gas it's a, it's an expense that you have to do. You're gonna have you can pay the gas thing back. Go get your gas, put the credit card up. As Key said, you'll get comfortable with it. It's like oh, I got gas on, I can go get food on it. Now it's like no, slowly build and slowly get your finances straight, and then start venturing out a little bit more. Then you can start putting the trips and things on there. Like like it's not a splurge card. It's not the 
I can pay this back later. I'm a no, no. Like if you can't, especially starting off, if you can't handle it, don't, don't, don't get into it. Um, and I just saw Kai. She put in the um comment, the chat. She said, "So true. I'm 24 and I messed myself up so bad with the credit card." And Kai, I just want to say, like, give yourself graces because the conversation oh, yeah. we're having tonight, like, we did not grow up having these conversations. So no. give yourself grace and then put a plan in place to really attack that credit card debt because high interest credit card debt, I'm telling you, it can kind of haunt you for a long time. But if you put a plan in place to pay it off, I promise you, you will be good to go. So definitely. Right. And don't don't feel bad about that. Kyle. Like, as I just told y'all, my credit card story when I was younger, I didn't understand it and I messed it up. And I mean, I showed Key, me and Key talked about my credit score a, a while ago. Like my, my credit score is in a good place. Like to say I made that mistake young in my 20s. And now I can sit there and say, like, no, like, it, it doesn't set you back. Now, the thing is to not be fearful of it. Because I could have easily been like, well, I'm not dealing with credit cards no more. I messed up my credit. Like, no. Like, learn what I messed up and then just just apply that. Like, we're all going to make mistakes. Like, uh, it just happens. Um, I'm not going to spend too much. He, he buying his third house. Period. <laughs> I'm not, not going uh, to spend too much time on this. But how to check your credit. Um, I think everybody should check their credit at least once a year sometimes twice, especially with the fraud and everything that we got going on, like in this time and now, like try to check your credit. Uh, the number one thing to understand is there's a difference between your credit report and your credit score. Um, your credit report is everything itemized on what's in your name, your address, every job you had, all of that is on your credit report. Your credit score is the mathematical number that we talked about earlier that the credit bureaus provide. Um, the scoring models for the credit report or FICO. FICO is older. Um, it's used by 90% of lenders. So anytime you kind of go into a car dealership or try to get a mortgage or a credit card, they're going to say, hey, this is your FICO. Vantage is what it was created to compete with FICO and most credit and monitor software is using. So that's why if you log into Van uh, Credit Karma, your credit score may be higher or lower, depending on who you are. Um, and then when you go apply for that loan or that car or that house, it's like, oh, no, your credit score is not that. It's actually better or worse because it's two different models. Vantage is good because Vantage should tell you when something is on your, your credit profile. Like I use Credit Karma just simply to make sure I'm, I'm monitoring my thing. Like I don't want to pay for a software company or anything like that. So Credit Karma kind of lets you know, oh, you have something come on your account. I just check it. FICO is good to have because like that's what a lot of lenders are using. So just be mindful of that. Um, you can request a free copy of your credit report from each of the three uh, major credit bureaus. Um, they all have their website. So you just type in their website, order your credit, uh, your credit pro report, and it'll get sent to your email. Um, or you can get it mailed to you. Um, and then just read through it. Like I said, if you have any problems, like reading through it, or you feel too scared to read through it, like call me, send me I DM, say, hey, Des, am I looking at this the right way or whatever? Um, and then anytime you're denied for credit, they are authorized to send you a letter stating why you were denied for that credit uh, within 60 days. So a lot of times you can get your free credit report then too. Um, but I always encourage people to check their credit reports at least once a year, like for sure. Um, the other thing to be mindful of is when you go on these, the credit, the credit websites, you don't have to sign up for your score. You're not looking for your score. You're looking for your report. So don't let them fool you into thinking you got to sign up for their credit monitoring score to get your report. So don't, like, like I said, that's why we got to know the difference between the report and the score. Um, more links. Um, I'll send these the key for you all. Um, these are the free links. Um, I may can drop them. I don't think I can drop them into the chat. But um, these are the links to uh, look at your uh, your credit scores. I'll send them the key and she maybe can send you all something in the follow up. Um, take a look but this is how you kind of check your your, uh, your your scores on the different sites see i even give you all the, the cheat code like be sure to opt out because you will get your report and in like 30 days they're gonna bill you like 29 dollars but like I, you say i say like be sure to opt out of uh out of the trials on the uh, the one dollar report um how to raise your credit score like understand the five parts of the credit score which we talked about earlier which are uh, payment history what you owed credit history length, types of credit, uh, inquiries. Like understand those uh, multiple lines of credit. So having a good mix, so your car loan, a credit card, make sure you're paying your student loans. 
and then age, like some things just take time to build, like just understand, like it's going to take time. Like the, the sooner you start, the better you are, you know, um, if you have a parent that has some good credit and like, they got a good car that they're taking care of. Hey, mom, dad, like, can you add me on this car? Like, and your parents probably gonna have like 10 years worth of credit origin. It's like automatically you get a boost. That's why if you're not comfortable having your own credit card, like talk to your parents, talk to your spouse, talk to your brother, sister that has a good credit card. Say, bro, I don't want to deal with the credit thing. But like, if you can add me to this, I don't even need the car. I just want the benefit. So the car is going to get shipped to them in the mail. They activate it, cut it up. And now you're building your credit without you having to worry about a thing. So, but just make sure they're making the bills on time. Now, as soon as they start missing the bill, tell them you don't want no parts. Get, get me off of there. Um, how to avoid credit card scams. As I just told y'all, uh, car dealerships in the mall, online furniture, protect your social security number. Like until you know you absolutely are ready to buy that piece of product, do not give your credit, your, your social security number out. Like that's, that's the gateway to your credit report, your social security. Um, check your credit reports yearly. As I said, um, I will, uh, I'll send key those links to, uh, and, you know, the, the things of everything to kind of check them. And then research your, uh, yourself after receiving information. Like anytime you get something, like Google it. Like um, a lot of times you can kind of look and see how like your Google profile and what's out there, like the dark web, all of that. Just be on top of your information at all times. Uh, some apps like Discover, they offer a free dark web, not a free, but they offer a dark web scam of your profile um, to kind of see what's out there on you. And if anybody will open anything in your name um, and just different things like that. Um, and this is my last slide. It just talks about, it sums up everything we kind of talked about and kind of gives a, a number with a lot of the things that we discussed today. So um, how does credit impact gaining access with real estate? You generally want to be over 60, 640 to be approved for a home. Like that is the sweet spot. Unless you're military with a VA loan, you want to be at a 640 um, to be minimum. A lot of people are going to tell you, oh, we'll take you at a 620. Like, yeah, they will if you are approved, but now, if you got a 620 and you get denied, you're probably going to take a eight to a five to 10 point drop from you hitting your credit. Now, it's that much more for you to get to that 640. Um, I tell a lot of people, um, the minimum is 660, I mean 640, but to be comfortable to make sure you're not wasting your time, like you probably want to have a 660 FICO score, like, um, like to be honest. Um, and then, like I told you, all to get the, be the best rates, you want to be 720. A lot of people are going to say 700. Um, I'm going to say a 720. You want to be in a 720 range to where you know for sure you're getting approved and you're getting solid rates. Um, cars, uh, no minimum score because, you know, you have some cash lot. Some people that will just run your credit and put you in bad upside down deals the moment you drive off a lot. Um, but the better your score, the lower your interest rate. That's always good to know with cars. Like the same way we did the, the mortgage thing, we could do the same thing with a car loan. The difference between a $300 payment and a $600 payment over five years like you know like that 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 money adds up um even though it's a sharp period of time apartments um each apartment is specific to their each each score each each one is specific to their the, the complex when i'm apartment shopping when i was apartment shopping the one thing i'll do is say hey how are you determining your uh what 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 uh what credit bureau are you using like a lot of them won't know and they'll say hey i have to get back to you but some of them come back and say hey we use uh TransUnion, Equifax, and uh, Experian. Or, hey, we just use Experian. So now you want to make sure your credit score for that bureau lines up with what that apartment is looking at. Nine times out of 10, the credit, the, the apartment is going to want you to be in that 660 range to where you don't have to have a deposit. Because as, like, as we all know, like if you, you may not, if you qualify for it on the lower end, they're just going to hit you with a higher deposit to where, oh, you need to have first month or first two months of rent to get into our apartment. Or, if you have a 700, 720 credit score, it's like, okay, well, we'll just take a $300 deposit to get you in here. Um, or you may be denied if you have a low, too low a credit score. Um, phone and utilities, same. They'll, they'll run your, uh, your, your, your reports. Um, water, phone, all the major uh, phone companies, they, they run your credit. Um, and the higher your score, the lower your deposit. Like if you have a good credit score, they're not going to require you a deposit to, to get that new loan, phone line. But if you have no credit, no credit score or a low credit score, they're gonna uh, they're gonna require you to do a deposit. The tricky thing with apartments, phone, and utilities, and some apps are trying to change this now is if you make on time payments, you do not get benefits of that like you do in real estate or a car. They just check to see if you qualify to stay there or get that service. But 
unless you miss a payment, you're not going to see anything on your credit report going forward. Um, with some apartments, you have to Google it. Key may be able to find it where it's some apps to where they can backdoor and get you credit on your credit report for your own time apartment payments. Um, I got some of those too. I'll send those to Key um, because some apps are able to, it's, it's a small fee, but they'll go back. And if you can like kind of give them, Hey, I've been paying my apartment on time for two months. They'll get it on your credit report to show you've had on time apartment payments um, over the last month. So anything to kind of um, start earning some, uh, some points in credit. Uh, that's my last slide. Uh, um, questions, um, comments, anybody? The floor is open. Comment while people are like, you know, typing up questions or whatever. For one, thank you so much, Des, for doing this. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate it. Um, on the last slide where you had like, how does credit, uh, how does credit impact gaining assets? I want all of you all to take a strong look at this because I don't want any of us on this call to be so thirsty to get a thing and it ends up costing us financially in the long run. So an example of that is, you know, your credit score is not where it needs to be, but you so desperately want this car. And now you got a $700 car payment with a 10% interest rate, like stuff like yeah. that just don't make sense. So like when I say, I don't want this stuff to go in one ear and not the other, more than anything, I just want you to sit down and think like yeah. think about what you are agreeing to financially, because these are financial responsibilities that you are going to have to have for three, four five years. And if you get a home, 15 to 30 years. So like I said, do not be so thirsty to get something ahead of time. And it ends up costing you thousands on top of thousands of dollars yeah. when you could have just waited, um, played the long game, and then it ended up working out in your favor in the long run. So that's just my, my tidbit on that. Nah, great ad. Great ad there. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Des, I also have another question. So in this day and age, I feel like I have just seen so much more stuff about like credit repair and people like selling different eBooks and just doing all of this different stuff. Like, can you tell me, can you talk to us about the purpose of credit, credit repair? Like what actually happens? Why would somebody need somebody to repair their credit? The thing with credit repair and it's, it's foggy. As you said, like I kind of, I've kind of scaled back as I, I'm a, I'm an honest person. I don't like to promise anybody anything I cannot deliver. And right. I've been just seeing so many things muddy with credit repair and people take advantage of people. Um, y'all can ask key. Like when I, when I was helping people on a consistent basis, like I, I was hesitant to charge anybody over like a hundred, hundred twenty dollars a month because it, am I working magic in a sense? Yeah. But a lot of these things, credit repair wise, like you can do yourself. It's all about the time. Like, Anything credit wise, like you essentially can do yourself. I'm always quick to tell people that like you could like Key has sent people to me for credit repair. Um, and I sent somebody to Key a couple of days ago. Like she called me like, hey, I need some credit repair. And I took one look at her credit repair. I was like, you don't need credit repair. I'm not about to charge you for credit repair. You need somebody to help you with budgeting. Like, but a lot of people are kind of say, oh, like they're trying to make a quick buck off people. I, I don't like that. Um, essentially, credit repair is, as I kind of gave you all the example of the collection agency, like Key sold the collection to me. Well, yeah, Key sold the collection to Desmond. And now I'm calling Key. Now I'm calling Desmond. I'm calling the person that, that owes it. Um, and I'm, I will, we'll use Kai. So Kai went to Key for the, to the hospital. Key sells the debt, Kai's debt to me. Now what happens is what a credit repair agency would do is they would look at Kai's report and say, hey, Kai, um, you owe this. Let's try to use some letters to either one, get it completely dismissed off of your credit report, or two, let's get it to a lower balance for you to be able to actually take care of it. Because what you will find is a lot of these collection agencies, they don't have the proper paperwork to collect a like debt from you. So the, the law states, like the, it's, depending on what state you're in, a collection agency has to have certain a certain amount of documentation to even collect information from, from you. So what a collection agency would do, what a credit repair agency would do is it would ask that collection agency to provide that documentation and you will see a lot of things disappear like that because they don't have it they're just contacting you Kai. they're just contacting kai the individual thinking she doesn't know any better and so now she's just gonna automatically pay it because the bill has her name on it but what a credit repair company is it's like no hey you're saying kai owes you send kai the proper paperwork as i told y'all i gave y'all one of those things was i said what i told y'all 
get an itemized statement of what you owe. And that should tell you what day you went to the hospital, what time, how much you owe, what procedures you're paying for. If a collection agency doesn't have that, they can't do that. And then the crazy thing is, you will see a lot of times it's finicky because with HIPAA, they're not supposed to have access to your medical information. So if they send you an itemized statement with say, hey, a cow went in for COVID or a standard stomach procedure. It's like, well, one, that's illegal. So now I got a problem with the hospital and I got a problem with you. So that's what a, 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 a great credit repair company, they would look into all those type of things. And then a lot of times it's being honest. Like I've had customers to where I've tried things and they're fine with paying me for a year. And I'm like, hey, don't pay me for a year. Let's get this balance down to something that you can pay. And it's going to come right off your thing. Like, but you, you bring in somebody in to look into that. But a lot of things you'll see is some great self-help books out there. Um, I would not. Um, it's a great. I'll find that book and send it to key. It's a great book that I would not pay any of these like IG influencers or anything for like a do it yourself kit. Like it's a great book out there. It's on Amazon. It's like $20. Um, it's this lady, I can't think of her name. It's like Elizabeth Warren, I want to say. Like she breaks down all the things we talked about in here. She breaks it all down. And then she even tells you how to like now go and do the credit stuff yourself. Now it's a matter of if you want to actually do it or you don't. Like, but she give you A to Z for $20. Like, hey, this is what happened. This is why they're, she gives you real life stories, all of that. Um, and like some some of the credit self-help books are good, but um, it's just all a matter of find somebody you trust. Thank you but so much. That's what a credit repair does. Yeah. And y'all, I'm here. I'm vouching for Dan. So if anybody does need credit repair on this call, like, please, you know, contact him. Like I said, we know each other like for years, but yeah. as far as him doing credit repair, we go way back to COVID 2020. And yeah. my mom's a realtor and she sent so many of her clients to Des who needed help with credit. So he's definitely somebody that I trust. And um, yeah. Yeah. Sweeps are, oh, well, last one thing on the credit repair, sweeps. Like, look look out. Anybody that's advertising a credit sweep, be mindful of that. Uh, what a lot of times is that they're, they're, they're probably going to submit identity theft in your name. And then you got to fill out, fill out police reports and different things like that. And it's going to come off your credit for the time being. So you got to kind of be fast acting. Um, and it may come back on, but be always be on the lookout for sweeps. Like, if anybody... If anybody's saying credit suites and they're saying, I guarantee you this is going to come off in 30, 60 days, be on the lookout for it. Like none of us can guarantee anything. With the, We're all doing the same thing. Like nobody has a backline phone to the credit bureaus. Like it doesn't work like that. All of this stuff is going through computers. Um, and then with the suite, if they, if they submit an identity theft, the credit bureaus automatically have to take it down. So when they get the alert that, hey, this may be identity theft, they're taking it off. That's why you have that small window to kind of do it. Then you got to go through the police report just to confirm. But they're definitely going to follow up with that. Um, like Google credit sweeps and Google arrests. And I promise you'll see like these people have been in credit companies like making people do false police reports and stuff. So, but don't let me scare y'all off of credit report. But just find somebody you trust. I have a question. Yes. Um, can you check your credit report more than two times? Like, let's say a third time in a year you could check i check i check my i check what's the day tuesday i check my credit report sunday monday and tuesday you can check your credit report as much as you like um as i told you download credit karma um and it's going to only have your transunion and your equifax going there but if you go look it'll tell you everything breakdown like what's in your name how it is like it's free of charge there's no it's no charge i would say start off with that um all the links that we provided those are how you can pull your itemized statement once a year. I encourage people to check it two times a year, but you can check it, especially with credit karma. You can check it as much as you want to, as much as you like. Like I get alerts to my phone every day. I check my mama credit too, because she got to stay on top of her. She be filling off with some weird stuff. But yeah, there's, there's no limit on how often you can check it. Um, okay, near Fort Mill. Okay, um, near Fort Mill. So, um. I have a realtor. I, I'm not sure she even deals with that area anymore. I'll give her a call um, and then let Key know. Her name is, uh, she's great. She's on um, Instagram as uh, Nashikwa in that area. She used to service that area. I'll, I'll get it to her. Um, but her name is Nashikwa Brown. She She's pretty good um, in the inland. Uh, but she's in Charleston. I'm not sure she serviced that area anymore. Um, but I'll, uh, 
I'll give some, I'll give some names up to. And the good thing about her was she has other contacts, and she'll probably give me a name of somebody in the area that I can get to. You. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, yeah. No questions? Okay, y'all. Well, thank you so much for joining tonight. Um, Des, again, thank you so much for doing this. I will, um, of course, like have the replay available to y'all. I'll probably do timestamps just so it's easier for y'all to navigate later on. So I should have that to you either tomorrow or Thursday. So thank y'all again for coming on. Of course, if y'all have any questions later on that come up for Des, you can follow Des at, is it Supreme? Yeah, Supreme FC Group um, on Instagram, yep. Yeah, I'll put uh, it in. Supreme FC Group. Um, and he's DM free, he's always. Yeah, whatever y'all need. Like I say, free of charge. I don't I don't charge people to consult or act simple. Like, I'm not that type of person. Uh, sometimes I'm a little crazy on time, just life-wise, but um. If I get to it, like, I, and like I said, I have no problem even jumping on the phone with somebody based on y'all coming from uh, Key because this is very important information and I, I, I'm i very passionate about, like, making sure, you know, we had the proper resources because you know, people charge us too many, too much for too many simple things, man. It shouldn't be all this um, yeah. type of stuff, so. All right. Thank y'all so much. Y'all have a good night. Same. Bye. Uh...